Hello once again, Stephen J. Murphy with you and all about you. Thanks for being with us again tonight. Your favourite show where we talk about your past, your present and your future. So grab your biggest pack of Monte Carlo biscuits and that big cooler bar cask of wine. We all might be needing it by the end of the show. Uh, Viv, how are you, Talk for yourself there, Steve. I prefer a very expensive bottle of Moe, but especially after oh, Mother's sweetheart, Day. Oh, sweetheart, if only we could. Yes, the, if the, only we could. The budget's getting there. Last week we had a good 50 seconds lead up. You might have heard us talking in the background, in, in anything from the high rents to how on earth are we going to get through the show tonight? And we were leading up to the show and here you are, you're feeling quite I am, calm. I'm, I'm and back breaths. and I'm wonderful and that cask of wine is definitely probably what oh, helps it's us kicking get in, there. Is it? You it's look lovely, my Thank dear. Thank you so much. Cobalt blue. Cobalt we, blue. Yes, and you had said that if I'd called you earlier this evening, you would have put a cobalt blue shirt I on. I was going to wear a tie and then I thought, uh, no, it just looks casual here. Tonight. My TV husband slack, and do I really <laughs> should, you know, we really should coordinate more often, shouldn't we? Viv, who's on the show tonight? Tonight we have the beautiful Tanya Nadil. Now, Nadile, Tanya, Hi. you are Australian, but you reside currently and you're based in London, is that in, right? In London at the moment. I've been coming and going for the past six years. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, we look forward to having you on tonight. And I can tell you, um, I met um, Tanya from having a reading about a year and a half ago over the phone from London to Australia, and it was amazingly accurate. So I'm very much looking forward to having you join us this evening. Thank and you. Tanya, you use uh, playing cards. Yeah, normal playing cards. And I was fascinated, we were having a little chat before yeah. you came on, uh, with tarot cards. There's a lot of people who can identify with them and we all have our own platform. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it wasn't quite working for you, was it? No, I can't read tarot cards at all. So many people have bought them for me, given them to me as gifts, so I've always sent them back. So these are just easy for me to channel and I'm just a natural at it. So how, I how still don't you, know. How, how did I know. you discover uh, with normal playing cards? Did you just get a message of each card when you were? No, I had friends that um, their grandmother was psychic, so they taught me when I was about 14 years old. Lovely. Yeah. And these are very old cards you have. Yeah, they're very old. So mm. there's there's yeah. a lot of energy. I can There's see a lot those. of it, yeah. A lot of energy. When, when you read for people personally, do you get them to hold your cards or do you just... No, I normally do automatic writing and I just channel with my higher self. Yes. So it's just an instant message I get. Yeah. Well, we're thrilled to have you with yeah. us tonight. Absolutely thank thrilled. You. It's an uh, honour to have you. Thank you so much for making the time to come and join oh, no, us. Thank you Lovely. for having me. I know you're really busy here because yeah. you're only here for a short time. Aren't short you? time and I'm so busy. Well, apparently you've just yeah. arrived and you've already done 30 readings. Yeah. Booked out. Well, yeah. viewers at home, if you do want a reading, try and get in. I don't know if you'll be able to, but yeah. you can always organise through um, our website or Facebook to do one over the phone, which is what I did with you. And um, it, was in it was incredibly informative. And now that I look back over the last year and a half, so many of the things that you said to me yeah. have come to light in um, detail. Well, be pretty busy tonight. Tulsi Vandergraaf, good uh, to have you with us here this evening. Great to be here. And lovely as well. You, uh, we t said just before the show, <laughs> we swapped chairs with Tulsi, because you're on, oh no, you're on a different chair now. I'm on a small chair, so I'm, I'm not um, hovering <laughs> yeah, above everybody. Because I, I was sort of perched up here, and then I, we swapped chairs, but you look like you're I'm quite comfortable. I'm very comfortable, and your height now, so that's mm. good. Thank you, my love. Well, great to have you with us. Uh, just for our new friends who are joining us on the yeah. show, your background... My background, well, I've, I've got a law and psychology background mm -hmm. and uh, for the last seven years I've been uh, working uh, with my business which is called Lead Your Own Change and so I do a lot of work with organisations and individuals. All, a lot is around uh, conflict resolution, communication skills, dealing with change, so I do you know, mediations, coaching and workshops. So a lot of people uh, who are finding themselves even out of work, not too sure where they're going, they're mm. at crossroads, yeah. uh, and th this is where it affects the confidence. Mm. Is this where you step in? Yeah, look, it's, uh, it's part of what I do. I definitely do a lot of work um, with confidence, and I love doing that because I think that there are some you know, r relatively small things that we can do that can make a big difference to feeling better about sort of our life and how we manage things. Yes, and uh, well, once the confidence goes, mm. uh, everything else starts to erode, doesn't mm. it? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's interesting because a lot of people that I speak to, they almost see confidence as like a, a magic button that, yes. you know, I need to, like, you press it and I have confidence or I need confidence to be able to do things. Yes. But in, in fact, from my perspective, it's more about I need courage to take the action that will give me the confidence. Is that the number one solution? Well, I think what it is, is it's really important to recognise that when we're doing something new or something that overwhelms us, we are unlikely to feel confident. Yes. And so it's the small steps that we take in action that will give us the confidence. Um, you know, you just made me think there for a minute too, uh, because you're, you're quite physical, so you, do, you love exercise. Uh, where did you get that from? <laughs> well, I, I got the impression that you were doing a lot of walking. Uh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I, in, well, at my best, that is true. No, yes. no, no, you are a basketball player. Oh, well, yes, Excuse I, me. I was trying to be a basketball player. And a very player. good one at that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where you're getting all these. Our, <laughs> our, our conversations <laughs> together, Tracy. Oh uh, well. Okay. So uh, I'm 46 now. I decided that I wanted to once in my life play a team sport. So uh, at the uh, age of 46. Yes, that's yeah. right. So well, actually, I was 45 at the time. So I joined a women's basketball team and learnt it um, yes. last year. I, I got one one mm -hmm. season in, and then I broke my finger. So yes. I'm having to reevaluate it. But yes. but I mean, it's interesting that you 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 bring that example up because for me, uh, one of the bar I was I was actually experiencing my own barriers around getting fit. And so uh, a lot of the work I do with people as well is you, you kind of take a step back and think, okay, there's you've got some goals. Say you want to get fit and it's not happening, what is, is stopping you from doing it? Maybe there's another way you can do it. So for mm. me, I thought, well, mm. okay, so what's something that I could feel passionate about yes. that um, yeah. might make the difference? So I joined the uh, basketball team and, and I actually wanted to go walking and running and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. You know how you give people confidence and, and you lead the change. Did you go through a crisis and realise I'm stuck in a vortex, I need to change myself? Oh gosh, that's a that's a big question. I, I mean, it's interesting because. Or did you reach crossroads when you said that's not working for me anymore? Mm. I've got to move on because it happens to everybody, doesn't it? Yeah. Look, I, I mean, I, I don't know that there was a particular sort of crisis point, but I think you know, for for all of us, life is a work in progress. So yeah. at different times, we experience challenge and yes. things are hard, and yes. then we have to take a step back and think, okay, yes. what's happening here, and what can I do differently that might make a difference? And for me, it's often small steps that can make a big difference. Yes, and we have. Margot Cairns on, mm. hello Margot, uh, a couple of weeks ago who was talking about tumultuous change which yes. is going to affect nearly every industry and we're seeing single-handedly where the internet is just yeah. wiping out these industries mm. and she's saying get ready. Look, uh, but we're not too whole... sure how we're going to get ready are we really? We're, we're just well accepting her, way, her way of saying to get ready is to learn how to adapt to yes. change. Mm. So you know people, a lot of people are you know becoming redundant, are having to um, spread out their jobs skills they're going you know they're having to they're finding that you know maybe they studied IT at university mm. and by the time they they graduate that form of um, you know technology is redundant there's a whole lot of things changing whereas like when I grew up you could basically study one thing and you could get in that job and a lot of people stayed in that job forever things you know that that whole um, you know paradigm has completely changed and I think the thing that you say about courage really measured up um, with what Margot was saying. Mm -hmm. Courage is the most important thing. Take that step, you know, because you don't know if you're going to have the confidence until you actually get in there, get your hands dirty and have a go. Now, how many of us on this table would be prepared to grasp, and even our friends at home, I thought about this yesterday, would you be prepared to study another language? I've been thinking about doing that. Yeah, me too. Because apparently it changes the brain synapses mm -hmm. and it's a very important way of deterring any sort of, um, you know, mental decline as you age. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because um, my mother suffered from dementia, uh, it's very important to me to do everything that I can. And learning a new language is one of the quick, is apparently one of the, the uh, number one ways to avoid uh, developing dementia in um, in our elder years. Mm. Well, that's, I mean, I, I think all those kind of, kind of suggestions, even learning a language or taking some different steps that give you confidence is, is, is a great way forward. I think one um, example that stands out for me 
me is a lot of people have a fear of public speaking. So sometimes it can be really helpful to think about some small steps that you can take to get a little more confident. But you have to be really careful when you are trying to get uh, to, to develop confidence, not to overwhelm yourself. Uh, an example I have is, you know, one of my clients, uh, before she came to me, she had this terrible fear of public speaking. So she joined uh, a really full on public speaking workshop and Tony it created Robert style public well, it, she, had, she had to walk across fire before she did a presentation. <laughs> well, it created so much fear in her that it, it did the exact opposite. So we need to remember that we have to be gentle with ourselves and accept what's happening for, for us in, in, with that fear and then think about, okay, what's something small that I can do that will build that confidence up gradually? Yes, that's, that's, uh, that's a good point. And I, I've done a lot of public speaking mm -hmm. and uh, I really, in, initially, uh, because I've always been on air, it didn't really throw me. When, when you see a live audience and uh, there'll, there'll probably be a few friends who are tackling that, that course to do a public speaking course and I think even I would like to still continue to do it mm. because you can always learn something. Some people in the audience are going to really be into what you're doing and yet there's others who are there who are not quite sure of you and their their facial expressions uh, are justifying oh, well, when, that. When you're doing the public speaking yeah. and you're and looking at Others will audience. hate what you're doing and some are like this going, yeah, right. But isn't that like, don't, don't they say that, what is it, something like 70% 70, 70 of people, you know, are going to be eh, eh, or not even like you? That you can't expect everybody to have a positive response to it. Yes, I, so you're, yeah. you're attached to that response. And I think that goes back to fear and once again, lack of confidence. But I also think there's another aspect of that is how we interpret people's responses. So we might yeah, consider great. something uh, personal to us. So you, you have that example of a person looking at their clock and looking, you know, not very uh, interested in you, but they might be having a challenging time themselves. So we can often put our own interpretations and we have to be careful because that can almost confirm some negative thoughts we have about ourselves. Oh look totally and I, I see where you're going there that <laughs> it, it's very interesting but I always found it amusing yes. but uh, to, but I if I'm talking to a live audience I try and uh, go to as many people as I can in a live audience to make them feel involved. Mike Walsh, a one-time famous TV presenter, said the moment that your audience starts coughing, and I've been watching this <laughs> year for years, and it does happen, when your audience starts coughing, they're bored. Don't cough. Or you. they start sneezing. <laughs> you know so. I was going to throw one out there. <laughs> <laughs> what about sneezing? Without any further ado, no, I knows. think we better move on and before we go into a coughing fit. I do mm. want to bring up yeah. is you... I think are creating a whole new paradigm of conflict resolution. I've seen you doing this work. I think uh, conflict resolution, um, you, you take the traditional methodologies of conflict resolution, but then you've added a whole new spin to it. And I think it's your intuition mm. that you've put with it. But I, I've never seen anyone be able to mediate between people that have actually wanted to kill each other in a room before. And I've actually seen Tulsi do this. and simmer it down like she's basically put a fire hose on them and stopped it in seconds. Yeah. I don't know what it is about how you approach it or what you do, whether it's just your demeanour. I know it's very much to do with who you are as a person, but it, that, that, that's a whole other level. Thanks, Bill. Well, welcome. I think it's also because I love, I love the work and I know that when you get human beings together, and you help them to kind of take a step back and take stock about what's going on and have a look at potentially where there are points of agreement and, and work with them. Sometimes this you know, magic can happen. And I feel that too. I, I don't even know how to explain at different times, but it's like getting into the zone and I just love the work that I do. So I feel very grateful to be able to do it. Well, so do our viewers, Tulsi, and uh, lovely to have you with us back tonight. And Sarah has written in and uh, she would like to direct a question to you, if you could uh, answer, please. I had a very difficult relationship with my parents and had to stop seeing them because of how toxic it was. I'm trying to work out and uh, see, get my life back on in order again but every time I have the idea about doing a course at TAFE that I'm interested in I can hear my parents voices in my head saying oh you're not studying to be a lawyer or a doctor you're not good enough and then I go to give up how do I get rid of these voices in my head which keep haunting me hmm. this is a common trait uh, look uh, Sarah I think that's a really great question because it's um, it's something that I see 
a lot of, uh, that people are challenged by voices that they have, the messages that they have been, I guess they've been given from their, their past, from experiences potentially with their parents or bullies or sisters, brothers, boyfriends, girlfriends, that kind of thing. So you're not alone with that, with that message that's um, in your head. Uh, and you know, I can, you know, I can only imagine how it is for you because the very people that brought you up and you know brought you into this world, you've had to make a decision to not have them in your life anymore. So that shows a lot of clarity and strength on your part, which you know I think is really important to recognise for yourself. But that's a big achievement, uh, anyway. So uh, as far as those voices go now. Those voices, uh, it's very, very tempting just to want to sort of shut them down and stop them. The unfortunate thing is, I mean, with a bit of therapy and coaching, look, it's possible that you can work with those voices a little bit more, maybe minimise them. But in general, uh, really, the, the best approach for you is to, rather than trying to get rid of them and feeling bad every time you hear them, is to accept that those voices will be with you like we, we all have different voices, but you don't have to listen to that voice. You can accept that that voice is there and acknowledge it, almost like uh, an, uh, an unwelcome friend. So a friend can walk in the door, an uninvited friend, and you can note that they're there, but you don't need to ask them to sit down. And then, you know, there's probably a bit of work for you to do. Take stock around what are your own values? What is the voice that comes from your true heart? and really think about that, that voice and focus on that voice. So the next time the other voice comes to, to speak to you, you know, the ones from your parents, you can say, okay, there it is, got it, I know it's there, I accept that that's part of me, I'll probably have that with me, you know, potentially for the rest of my life, but that's okay because I don't need to listen to it. I can listen to my own voice and, and support myself in, you know, how I move forward in life. Beautiful. Tulsi, um, before we, we just wrap up this segment, I've got one more question that I would like to ask mm. you. Um, and it's something that I see happening over and over again with myself and with friends and family. Mm. We see patterns in our lives, mm. in relationships, in choices, in the, you know, the way that we go about our work, whatever. Um, it's kind of something that people seem to repeat. Do you have any advice on how people can break patterns? Mm. Say somebody continually chooses the same kind of person in a relationship. What's a, a bit of advice for them on how they can recognise that or uh, change their mm. behaviour? Yeah, so look, I, I think the, the truth of it is change is difficult. But the wonderful thing about even talking about patterns is the fact that uh, if we recognise that there is a pattern, that's our first opportunity to make that change. So without awareness, we can't make the change. So if we have that awareness about a particular pattern, and different times it's hard to get that awareness, it might require a bit of therapy or some uh, deep and meaningfuls with some really trusted friends. But once we have that awareness that there is that pattern, then we have to really take a step back and think, where did that come from? And you know, often we, you know, we, we really are a product of, of you know, the lives that we've lived you know, from childhood. So that's, uh, you know, it, takes, it can take quite a bit of time to think about where those messages have come and explore it so that we can work out how we do it differently. Yeah, and I think a lot of patterns that are instilled in us are, are, are implanted in our childhood years. But my message is too to a lot of people, don't be too hard on yourselves. Yes. And it's, it's all too easy to turn to the drugs or to turn yeah. to drink. And, and I think now more than ever, or was, it, or was it just as bad in the 40s or the 50s, mm. even after the Second World War? Look how many people came back traumatised and even after yeah. Vietnam. Yeah. And it, it filtered through all of our lives and we had to cope, didn't we? Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, turned to the bottle. Or they turned, We didn't really have counselling or mm. psychologists in those days. Not like we do now, but, uh, but we, we did cope. And my message is to a lot of people, you know, focus on those good things that are about you because yeah. there's so many people that are so, well, everyone I feel, everyone's talented in so many ways mm. and focus on those gifts. Well, I think that there's two points you've made there which I think are, are really great. One is the importance of accepting where we are, are right now because that's such a powerful thing because if we're feeling bad about where we are, then we, we can keep ourselves stuck and we're focusing on the negative. And the other thing that you mentioned, which I really, which I love, which I 
talk about a lot is having gratitude for what you do have. Because when we focus on gratitude, it actually changes what's happening in our brain as well. Yes. So it can, it can help us um, create more sort of positive stuff going on yes. without getting technical yes. and it can shift things for us so that acceptance and that gratitude they're such powerful kind of first steps when we are trying to change and i think also to you just made me think about something there even though you didn't mention the, the phrase unconditional love what what affords us of that a pet dog or a pet cat mm. could be a pet bird, but we love our pets, don't well, we? Well, that's why I bring yeah. mine to studio every week. <laughs> Lucy's in the control room. Yes, but you had two dogs last week. I did. I've inherited my mum's puppy, so mm. um, she's I having have the night two. off. She's actually at puppy training for a whole week, mm -hmm. overnight stays. Because she hasn't learned to pee outside yet. <laughs> well, I think that's a great idea. I mean, what you're talking about, again, are the sort of small steps that sometimes can really make a huge change for a person. So if someone is feeling low or challenged, you know, and they can have an animal, I mean, animals, you know, as you would know, the research really does show that it can make a big difference yes. to a person's well-being. And exercise as well. Mm. Well, Tossie, Walking. Yes, two <laughs> eyes, my dear. And uh, you're going to be with us a little bit later on into the Absolutely. show. Looking Topic of to discussion. It. Yes, we'll see you back soon. Please. And can I just thank Sarah for her um, question as well? I didn't kind of finish off, you know, um, completely with her. But yeah, look, it's, you know, I, I'm really uh, sort of appreciate those kind of questions. And it's good f for us to remember that we, we're not alone with, with some of those challenges. And it, I think it really helps to feel not alone. Was so it, it's great. It, yes. was, um, it was very, very uh, courageous of her to be that honest in yeah. her vulnerability. Mm. Takes vulnerability. Okay. Moving right along. Okay, so we are now moving over to you, Tanya. Welcome right. once again oh, to AAY. It's so wonderful to have you join us. I'm really excited because I first met you over the phone. I know, it's so weird now. I finally get to meet you in flesh. After a oh, year no. and a half, I feel like we're friends and we've never oh, you're not, you're not met a stranger, before. Vivian. Well, no. I feel like I've known you all my life. When I walked in and saw you in the green room today, it was just like, hi. Yeah. Hey, hi. And we've only really spoken, what, twice on the phone? Yeah, only twice. Yeah. The, the wonders of Facebook to keep people connected, that's how we've stayed in touch. But yeah. um, Tanya did a reading for me a year and a half ago and talked about this show uh, well before I had any idea of it. Um, coming to being and she also mentioned some other things that I'd be doing that seem to be unfolding as well and um, some personality quirks that I have that were in let's just say incredibly accurate and I'm stopping there <laughs> so um, so yeah but one thing that you did say to me and I do want to bring this across tonight is Tanya said to me I tell everybody when I do a reading if I don't get any information I'm not going to make it up and I'm not going to say anything so I want to make you feel confident and comfortable tonight that if you don't get information coming through when we ask you yeah. the questions please don't feel the need to push for that um, but before we move on there's a whole lot of people from England that are giving shout outs to you I'm hearing there's 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 people from Lebanon there's Nathalia Nathalie yeah. um, there's Natalie is yeah. it from Lebanon uh, we've got Kate uh, Zdenka Sandra and a whole bunch of other people and um, Michael's watching tonight too hi everybody thank you so much watching us is what keeps the show continuing. So let's get going. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, just one quick reminder before we move on. We do have the live show at the Fraternity Club at Ferry Meadow. Um, now, what date is that, Mark, again? June 16, because you didn't put that in my script. Friday, June Friday, 16. Friday, June 16, yep. and we'll see you there. Steve and I are doing a live show mm -hmm. um, with Josephine Sartor. We've got uh, Sheila Vajoresa, and we have Sammy, and we also have Linda Usope and Peter Hoare joining us. It's going to be a fantastic night. Buy your tickets. Let's see you there. $55 per ticket. Buy three, you get the fourth One free. ticket free. No, you actually get Steve free. So, uh, yes, gift with purchase. There, <laughs> gift <dude>. with purchase. <laughs> Steve is a gift with purchase. Don't know what you'll do with it. You might have to drink a cask of wine to yeah. wash him down. But anyway, yes. off we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for those lovely remarks. <laughs> Moving on. You know those quirks you were talking <laughs> about? Yeah. Okay. Steve, your first question yes. is up. Oh, have I got the first question for 
Tanya? A few questions. Okay, uh, Nikki writes in. Uh, this is a very simple question, Tanya. Will I find a life partner and be happy? And also the date of birth. Uh, the date of birth is the 25th of July, 1972. That's a pretty loaded question, isn't it? It's a brief question, but it's yeah. pretty loaded. Nikki. Will I find a partner and will I be happy? Uh, Nikki, 25th of July, 1972. Hi, Nikki. Um, I'm picking up you've had a lot of relationship issues in the past and you haven't had much luck in love but um, I'm also picking up that this is a really good year for you to um, go out start meeting people and I actually feel you'll meet someone within between now and the next 18 months um, but you also it's also come through what they're telling me is that you're also extremely sensitive so that also causes, causes um, a lot of issues in your relationships when you're meet, trying to meet that person. So you need to really, really work on it. But there definitely is love there for you. That's it? Yeah. Fantastic, great. So uh, you, and you stop when you get the information. Yep. It's, just it's, it's yeah. in interesting, isn't it? When we get psychics on the program and people who channel, when it does cut off, it just yeah. cuts off. Yeah. Because there, there, is, there is love there for Nikki. But I'm also, but before I finish with Nikki, I'm also picking up there was a past relationship and you need to also let that go for you to move forward. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, a, quite, there's quite a few issues here I'm picking up, but we need to go more in detail. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe that's something that um, yeah. Nikki can reach out through the website and yeah. organise to have a, yeah. a full reading with you because, mm -hmm. like you were saying in the green room, sometimes it takes an hour for you to get to that place yeah. in a reading. And sometimes it takes time for people to unfold, to let, to allow you in. It's like me going into your drawer. You know, I can't just open the drawer and start snooping. You've got to give me permission. Oh, so that's a beautiful when you're doing way. A, when you're doing a reading, you, you need to have permission. That person needs to be open. If they're not, that's why when you do a reading, you meet people. Some people, you just don't get it right because they just won't let you go through the draw. I love it. I've you never I mean? heard of it like, expressed that way, but it's so true. So it's, it's permission. So if you're not going to allow me to go deep into your feelings and to try and tune into it, I'm not going to be able, able to, to help you. So well, this, I must this have definitely opened the drawer. Like you definitely right opened. Right out and just like <laughs> came out of the cupboard and fell on the floor with you. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, now we have Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Now, Sylvia mm -hmm. is born on the 27th of the 4th, 1956. Sylvia says, hi there. Is it possible for someone to see if they can connect with my daughter as I miss her deeply? It was her birthday on the 7th of May. Now, a year, unfortunately, wasn't given. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering if she had any messages for me. Also, um, mum and dad, if they come through, would be much appreciated. Thank you in advance. So the daughter and, um, and both parents. Mm -hmm. What was her name again? Uh, Sylvia. Sylvia. She born on the 27th of the 4th, 1956. Um, hi, Sylvia. Um, I'm picking up here, you've, you've gone through a lot of pain in your life and there's a lot of tears here. Um, I'm also picking up with your daughter. She's telling me to tell you that you need to start living. You need to start exploring. She wants you to travel. And it's a really good time for you to explore, re-explore life again. But there's a lot of tears here. Your mum and dad, there's also tears there, but um, I'm not getting information strong enough because I don't have enough information here. Um, but I'm definitely getting, you've gone through a lot of heartache in your life, but we're talking about a lot. Oh, yeah, okay. very sad. So just be strong, plan a holiday and do something exciting. And, um, and that might be herald a new time in, in her life. Oh, absolutely. She's a beautiful lady, a beautiful person. You're a perfectionist too. So, and you've got a lot of love to give. So make sure you put yourself out there. And um, yeah. a really big trip overseas. Something exciting. 
something exciting. Yeah, something fun, colourful. Colourful. A yeah. cruise, maybe. Cruises are colourful. Mm. Tanya, you're right to keep doing readings. So we're, yeah, we're not going to yeah. bombard you with too many. Um, uh, all I mean. Leonie <laughs> is uh, with us, uh, just written in. Uh, 12th of August. Uh, what a pick birth date that is, friends. Uh, born on the 21st, the 12th, the 30th, or the 3rd of any month of the year, you've got a charmed life. It does get a little bit emotional uh, for you, but uh, 12 is a very lucky birthday. Leonie, 12th of the 8th, 1960. I'd like a general reading please love and career okay. bit frustrated and impatient with my work okay you shouldn't be leone let's have a look hold on um, what i'm picking up here leone um You've got, you actually got beautiful numbers here. You got actually very, very lucky numbers. So you're always meant to be working for big names, renowned jobs, um, and quite successful. And um, now the second half of your life, money is very important to you. So you're also focusing on that. That's why I feel that you're getting frustrated because you want to exceed and move, move ahead with work. Um, but this year is a really good year for you to change. So if you're looking for change, change. But I'm picking up that you were going to change not long ago, uh, a couple of months ago, and it didn't fall through. But I'm definitely getting the change now. Probably the end of May or June. So there's definitely a change here. And even with your work and that and your company and all sorts of things, there's a lot of changes happening. But they're all positive changes. What else did you want to know? Um, okay, so that was the, the basically the general reading mm -hmm. about love, career, and frustrated and impatient at work. And love life. Mm. Mm. Throwing which, everything in which there. Which really, uh, like all of us, is probably posing, throwing out there to the universe at the moment, oh, where's my career going? Where's my love life going? I'll get another cooler bar cast out. <laughs> Here, yeah, I don't know where these know, cooler bar oh, casts came from. <laughs> a cooler bar candle. I hope it works for you, Steve. If it does, you throw oh, some of that you. over my way. Having a counselling session with you. I've never, I've never had a reading with you either. Oh, Even though I know right. you, I, I know you do readings. I do. Yeah. Well, we'll keep that one right, on my well, sleeve for you. Thanks for that, you. Steve. So, uh, <laughs> our next question we have. Over a cask of cooler bar. <laughs> <laughs> Big budget. Now come on. Two casks. Here we go. All right, moving along. I'm so sorry about this. We're normally much more empathetic and okay. sensitive. <laughs> Don't yes. be hard on yourself, Viv. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tanya. I'm I'll lighten up on myself. Our credibility's been <laughs> tied very to F111. <laughs> Too much Sagittarius in my shop. Okay, so, all right. So we have uh, Christy. Now, Christy's born on the 24th of the 12th, 1980. Could you please give me some guidance about my career? What I'm picking up here, you, the past 12 months have been not good at all for you. So even if you've been trying to change, nothing's been moving or going ahead. But I'm picking up, you need to be patient for the next 12 months. Um, within the next 12 to 24 months, you'll definitely be in the job that you're looking for. Um, again, you've got great numbers. You're very, very, very lucky. Um, and also, I feel in the future, you'll also work for a renowned or big company yourself. Um, and there's also talk of self-employment here. So there could be an opportunity for you to be self-employed down the track in the future. But you've got nothing to worry about, but you are not in a great cycle for you to move forward. So I'd stay still for now. Yeah. And, and how long, like what sort of timeline would you feel that staying sort of hunkering I, I, down I would feel be. like at least for 12 months sometimes you've got to go through the waves so yeah. you need to go through that not so good you know period before you get what you want so she needs to just be patient and also you know like the waves. sometimes the tide goes in and the, yeah. tide, the tide goes out yeah and you can sort of feel those 
in your life. She's quite young, and I think that um, you know I, do, I can certainly feel those cycles. Can't you in life when the uh, tides well, I was out? just having a look at that birth date, yeah. and uh, it's actually wonderful in the in the long term. Yeah. I, I think there's a few roller coaster rides with relationships. Uh, but she's a very attractive girl. With that birth date, she'd be mm. very, very good looking. Beautiful. And uh, not that it justifies <laughs> everything, but it certainly helps. But uh, I see you with a charmed life, Christy. Uh, I'm just oh, looking at your Dave, numerology. And uh, 24th of the 12th, 1980. That was correct, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, so very certainly nice. uh, the later years, 49, right through to the end of your life. Uh, I would say, though, you might want to do something in the food industry or get very creative with colours because that's what I'm seeing there with you. Let's move right along because we've got snapshot readings tonight exactly. and a topic of discussion Beautiful too, time. I believe. Thank you. Very good. Back to the topic of discussion and back to Tulsi. Fabulous. Tulsi, in hindsight of the questions that we asked you tonight, um, submitted by our viewers, we'd like to, I suppose, flesh that out a little mm. bit more and talk about some of the topics that tend to come up a lot in our readings, which mm. tend to be based around Love. 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 Career. Career. Finances. Money. And, and sort of, mm. I suppose, the underbelly of that is more about lacking in confidence, fear. You know, will we be loved? Will we find love? Will love stay? Mm. And the same with every other aspect of our life. So, you know, based on, on um, helping people with guidance, with readings, there's just as much guidance people are looking for just in that. Mm. How, do, how, how do I cope with these things. So I think yep. that topic of discussion tonight, we could really hone down to speaking about self-doubt and fear. Mm. I think they're two really big ones. And I, I mean, I know that with a lot of, um, you know, personal growth work that, that I've looked at over the years or been involved with different courses, tends to really dig deep underneath. And it always comes down to fear. Mm. There's either love or fear. I'm sure we've all heard that before. And it's hard to really essentially understand that, but I really think it does just mm. come down to those two things. It's either love or fear. And I think society is really set up for us to be fearful mm. about a lot of things. And we don't even know we're being fearful. Yeah. But is it so often who you know? I, I hear this phrase bounced around. And I even heard it again this week. Oh, it's who you know. And I've got to say, I've got to give that a very big tick because a lot of people still, they, they want to achieve and they want to get ahead, but a lot of us are not too sure how to go about it. Mm -hmm. And, but am I, in what I'm saying, and, and here's you being a psychologist as well, it's very soul bearing, because uh, you'll be listening to what I'm saying here. So am I opening up too much about myself in saying, oh, well, is it or the lazy man's way out? Oh, it's who you know. But don't you think that also goes back a little bit to fear? Uh, no, I, I, no, and I'll come back to myself about that. Mm. I, I don't think it is fear. I, I think, and I'm being very soul bearing by saying this, I think it's a bit of laziness. And because even being Australian, we, we're not lazy people, but we do like to go about the, the easy way around things because we're easygoing people. We, we don't like drama. We hate to negotiate drama and we always rely on our mates to help us so we in order can help them. That's just been our way. So mm -hmm. am I sort of going in the right direction with that by saying, oh. well, look, um, Tulsi's busting. It's really here, you know. Busting to yeah. set this one straight. Uh, look, I, I, don't, I don't know about, about that, Steve. I mean, I think that it sounds like, I think we, well, we all have sort of messages that we tell ourselves and that we, we have a kind of our own little paradigm that we operate in. And I, I, I'd probably have to sort of question where that yeah, where that comes from and what the truth of, of that is. Yeah. And it's not to say that there may not be truth to it, but I think sometimes there is that little bit of a thing we can, I don't know, attach to a particular message rather than saying, okay, what do I need to do in my life to change this? Yes. What do um, I need to, how do I take a step back and think about what's holding me back? What have I been telling myself that has been holding me mm. back? Actually, I, even with our younger friends, and I see so many, because I work with a lot of young people who come out of university, who and there's so much pressure to get mm. through those university exams and to perform, because we, in my day, yeah. we, we didn't really have the um, the pressure to go to university. No, we didn't. And uh, but now I see so many kids who are coming out of university. They're not going directly into their chosen profession. Mm. Uh, a lot of them can be in retail or they can be in other service industries, uh, even the health industry. And I think 
uh, the health industry, I mean, as we see our older friends getting older and older, we're, we're facing more health issues. Uh, and, and this is one of the biggest growth industries in the world, palliative care and working in with elderly people. And it's not really the chosen profession for a lot. It, it is for, for many. Um, and especially if you're born on the 6th or the 15th or the 24th, I'm coming back to numerology here because the people who are born on those particular birth dates, uh, and look at you agreeing out there with me, you love people, you love to love and you love to be loved. And, and I've seen it so many times through the study of numerology, uh, people who are in the medical profession, doctors and nurses, you, so often you look at their birth dates, the 6th, the 15th or the 24th, and I think, yep, there's that caring number, mm. but, but it's not, such an idealist world in that respect, but um, but you're good with helping people who are lacking in confidence. Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, yeah, I, I do a range of you know uh, work around that and and helping people overcome the things that are holding them back. But yeah. I do feel like one of the challenges that we uh, do face as human beings is is almost like a, a strive for happiness that where we think, what's wrong with me if I'm not feeling happy? If life feels challenging, and in fact. For me, one of the things that's really helpful for people is to rem remember that we're all in the same human boat of struggling, that that is the first point. So if we recognise that we are all going to struggle, and I know some of the, the people who uh, mm -hmm. asked you for readings today, I mean, it really does reflect that, you know, it, it's not easy mm -hmm. being a human being. It, it, it's tough. And, uh, and often we want certainty where we can't necessarily have it. And so we're trying to find the answers. And I think a couple of the sort of the first steps that we can take is recognize that we are gonna have some challenges from time to time. We're gonna have our, our down days, our happy days, our flat days, and that's part of life so that we don't start beating ourselves up, feeling bad about um, feeling bad and recognizing that you know there will be times where we will feel really sad about things with loss or you know a loss of a relationship or a person and that that is part of, of who we are as a human being and that acceptance uh, and recognizing that you know that that will ha that is going to happen for us can really help us manage that so we're just kind of watching it and being being with it rather than thinking what's wrong with me Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. I never used to allow myself to be sick. Um, I think working in this industry, mm. I got very used to turning up to work if my head was falling off or my arm was, you know, you know, my shoulder was coming out of its socket, I'd still turn up and do a 12 hour day at work. And only recently, probably about a year ago, I learned that when I'm feeling unwell, I, I retreat and I recover mm. and I give myself that time but that took a lot of emotional work to get to that pl place where I would give myself that but you know what I, you know what I notice time and time again when people get sick when they are overwhelmed with the prospects of going into a task or they get a, a job opportunity mm. or they it could be something that they've always hoped and prayed for yes. and I think there's that little enzyme in the brain that says oh no you can't do that or you're not going to be able to perform and this is where you were mentioning mm. fear before and I think yeah I think we all have that because we want to be good we want to perform and we want to be our best but there's that niggling little thing that says oh my god I think this is going to be overwhelming or it's just too big and time and time again uh, I see so many of us uh, and we talk about seasonal coming in you know the flu who wrote, season who wrote who you can heal your life uh, Louise, Louise Hayes. Louise Hayes. Hayes. Yeah. She talked about getting a cold or a flu as being overwhelmed. Too much going on in your life. Yes. It just everything but shuts down. I think when you get a yeah, cold or a the, flu, uh, you're releasing a shift. You're releasing and you shift. A shift. So my theory is, each time you get sick, you actually your body is finally letting go of something. So for me, it's a shift. It's so a shift. I always say to people, when you get sick, you get a cold. That's actually good. You've finally letting something go. Oh, that's interesting. I've had two really bad bouts of the flu this yeah. year, and I'm, I'm I would consider happen. myself fairly robust, yeah. but bedridden for you know days and days on end when I normally wouldn't. Did you let something go? Yeah, I think I, I've let a lot go in the last twelve months. That's why you're getting sick. So your body, you're finally Is releasing the, the shift. So you're moving to a higher level, to the next level where your spirit, where your energy needs to go. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. I never thought of it that way. Kitty. I'm going to run in because I can on occasions. <laughs> um, just because what you're talking about, 
One of my sons, seriously, when he was in, oh, look, for a long time, he actually got bullied a lot at school. And then he went to boys' school and yeah. he would walk down the street to go and catch the train to school and he'd call me, because, you know, they all have phones. He'd call me and go, oh, I've just been vomiting in the street. And he really would have. He would work himself up so much because mm -hmm. he was so scared about going to school and seeing these boys that were bullying him. He was physically sick and it made him physically and emotionally sick for such a long time. And we thought, you know, like we had him to doctors and we thought, oh, no, like he's a sickly child. Um, but it was all about yes, and, the, the yeah. emotional fear. Mm. And it's exactly, it's yeah. nothing to do yeah. about his uh, questioning his masculinity. Because I know boxers uh, who have been friends of mine over the years, and I said, how do you prepare for a fight? And they said, Steve, sometimes I'm physically ill mm. and I, I have this fear. Am I going to perform? Am I going to be threatened? Mm. Am I going to win? Mm. And he says, it's not always a case about winning. It's a case about having confidence. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, this is a yeah. guy who's like a strong boxer, mm. big muscly guy. I mean, yeah. you can have featherweight, lightweight, heavyweight. But he was a guy, masculine industry, full macho yeah. and yet still consumed by this, this fear. This is a boy who's been yeah. six foot-ish since he was about 15, so yeah. he's not tiny. Yeah. But he was just so fearful mm. of people just treating him really badly yes. and, and he just hated it. I mean, we ended up moving schools and stuff for yes. him and, and he blossomed. And it's interesting it's, that you know, his brother didn't go through didn't go through no bullying no. or being sick well or... did but didn't get through the sick thing he he coped with it in a completely different way they both coped with different variations on a theme in a completely different way but this one particularly seriously we there were days when it would go on every morning every yeah, morning he would get and, sick. until I let him come home when he'd get home and I go there's nothing wrong with him. I'm taking him to the doctor. Mm. You know, and Chelsea, then, may I yeah. ask you? Mm. Uh, I'll go and, now. And, no, no, it's Thank lovely you. having you here. <laughs> yeah, no, I was fine. going to ask you in your professional mm. capacity, yeah. what makes a bully? Oh, gosh, I don't... Uh, that's a big question. I don't know that I know the answer to yeah. that. Mm. But, uh, because they're yeah. obviously picking on an individual is is that individual reflecting back to them what they don't like about themselves so therefore they take it out on them is that one example look i, look, I think bullying is a, is a whole you know it's it's a whole area that you know there's a lot of study done around it it's yeah. the i mean the psychological impact on, on people and kids is huge mm. and it can you know we talk about the messages that we have yeah. that we have uh, within us even when we're adults now if if a child has been bullied from very young then you know later on in life it can make a huge it can make a huge uh, difference to how yeah. confident they feel how able they are to mm. embrace life I, I mean i experienced that a, a bit myself yeah. uh, when when i was young and so i think it's it they, it really does require so much support when someone has been bullied and but also you know if we're talking about kids who are the bullies there's obviously there's just something not right there as well and they need support to find out what is what is what are they doing and why is that happening mm. and that's that's why a lot of schools these days really work hard to make sure that they've got really strong anti-bullying approaches. I mean, I've got a child protection background as well, so I'm quite familiar with that area. But it's it's such a concern, and it, mm. I think I mean sometimes uh, the impact on kids is so strong, and you only know how bad it is when you say move them from another school, and suddenly they become who they really are. Well, that was what happened with us. Mm. Is that you know I so many letters to the school and it wasn't until i know it sounds terrible but i threatened that i would go to the department of education because yeah. nothing was being done about yeah. it it was just not good enough yeah. moved him to a different school and this particular school said now you have to deal with this we have the bullies here and we have the bullied kids here and this we are a school who we work around sorting them all out and trying to help them all function. But he functioned better in that school. He was awesome and he met up with kids who had been the type of kid who had bullied him and they were terrified of bullying again. They had got out of their schools because they didn't like who they were, mm. but it was just something that whole pack mentality or something made mm. them do it. And I... he's he's got really good friends from that second school. That was in year, year end of year nine. He went there, mm -hmm. he did, oh no, sorry, 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 halfway through year 10. He said, year 10, this is the boy who like wanted to leave school in year nine. He's like, I just want to get out. Did year 11, did year 12, is still really good friends with people from that second school. 
But even now, as a 20-year-old young man, there are functions that happen from the previous school yeah. where his brother will say, oh, there's a party, do you want to come? And he'll go, who's going to be there? Mm. And he'll yeah. go, no. Nah. And it's yeah. still happening. And he's six foot three. Yes. And he's a fabulous young man. And these kids, some of them are still doing it. And you go, mm. Do you know what I witnessed yesterday? It was terrible. I was at a restaurant for Mother's Day lunch. We were down at Narrabeen Lake. And there's a lot of ducks that wander around. And uh, we were looking out the window and I saw a group of children around probably six, seven, eight years of age. And this and one particular child, a boy, had a stick and he was oh, chasing dear. the ducks oh. and he was smacking them oh, really no. hard on the back. Mm. So everybody was watching and I ran downstairs and I, I gave him quite a serve and, <laughs> um, well, yeah, won't repeat it. So yeah, I've anyway, done that. I've done that uh, he <laughs> sort of looked at me. It wasn't perturbed at all. He walked off and five minutes later, they were doing it again behind a couple of trees. Anyway, I saw this duck limping off. Oh, oh, no. So it actually really hurt the duck. And the next minute, um, uh, the maitre d' of the restaurant ran downstairs and um, he found the parents who were obviously lunching and brought them out. But I did not see those parents chastise those yeah. children or do yeah. anything whatsoever. And. I was absolutely, and it, by the end of it, the entire restaurant was watching this yeah. debacle. No, it was terrible. Mm. Yeah. But mm. I, I was trying to have compassion for this kid as well. I was trying to understand what would make a child want to yeah. do that. Yeah. And then in some way, when I saw the parents' lack of observational care around it, I thought, well, yes, we really are a product of, of a lot of that. Like you were saying before, Tulsi is a product of, of our upbringing. Mm. And, that environment that we are raised in. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I always feel really sad about stories to do with bullying because I know that it really, it does have an impact. And as you say, mm. even though your your son is, you know, very tall uh, and, uh, you know, people would say, well, why would you feel vulnerable in some ways around being, you know, with these people? The truth of it is we, we do feel vulnerable and we it's absorb an these thing. messages yeah. and, and we take them with us into our adult yeah. life. And, and then to kind of release it or, or deal with it, we often have to get a bit of therapy or actually work out what's yeah. happening, or, or why am I not doing these things that I know I really could do and I'd love to do, but something is, is, is holding me back, I feel stuck. Mm. So often it's like, okay, let's, let's take a look back. Let's take a, a look at what was happening when you were young. What, what messages did you get from, from those around you that might be impacting? It may not be even the family. It could be just the experience at school or yeah, something. You know, we, we're very vulnerable and we're still, even as adults, I always think of us, we're all, oh, it helps me to think about it. We're all in some ways vulnerable children deep down, even in, as adults. So when we find ourselves, you know, reacting to someone else or feeling insecure or upset, often it's our little child that yes. is, and is we're being all triggered. Human. We yes. are, that's right. And we all respond to our hug or a cuddle. Mm. So thank, Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> Kitty's our floor director. And without Kitty, we wouldn't be here um, every night. And Kitty Mark is Mark at our control room. And uh, Eric, is uh, thank you show. very much. We've got a raft yeah, of... Uh, it's a family. Rennie and... Lee, thank you very much, yeah. everybody here. And uh, yes, yeah, lovely. Now we better move on here. Moving right along, we've got a few more readings. Okay. You're okay Get with that? Get yourself a cuppa at home, friends. We'll be here till a two cuppa, in the morning. Not a cup. No, not really. <laughs> or cooler bar. <laughs> yeah, a cuppa. I don't okay. even know if you can buy cooler bar anymore. I don't either. <laughs> All righty, Anne Marie. We have Anne Marie. Um, Steve, with this was your reading, but you were. Oh, is it? Yeah, off you go. Uh, Anne-Marie, uh, December 5, 1972. I hope you're still with us, Anne-Marie. Will I ever move or buy my own place uh, I'm, uh, or am I going to be stuck in renting for the rest of my life? Uh, that, no, I don't believe you will be stuck in renting. I think you're going to be sharing with somebody. Uh, Anne-Marie, I... This is Tanya's reading, I believe. Oh, you just mm. told me it's my Ta reading. No, Tanya's reading. Ta oh, okay. <laughs> but it was for you to ask Tanya. Oh, I beg your pardon. Because it's in the script. Mm. See, we got so overwhelmed here. I can May I just say what I think there before yeah, I hand that out to you? You're well, close to what I was going to say, out, too. Uh, you can tell we're live. Uh, <laughs> December 5, 1972. 
Uh, Anne-Marie, I beg your pardon. So, uh, will I ever move or buy my own place? Um, I really stuck renting for the rest of my life. But while you're working on that, Tanya, uh, I just want to say... Too, yes, I'm going to have a look here. Uh, you're a p girl who's had to stand on her own two feet. In my opinion, I think you've had to stand uh, and learn courage through many areas of your life. But uh, you love your freedom too, by the way, and uh, you love the thrill of the new. The good thing about you, Anne-Marie, well, there's many good things about you, but I think what does stand out is that you're so adaptable. You love the thrill of change. You don't, don't get stuck in a rut because it wouldn't suit you. Uh, but in your later years, and I go into the 50s and the 60s with you, I think you're going to have a very strong commitment to a plan. You're going to start out in a very small way, but it's going to build and build and build. And that's going to be your security. Overcome, and I say this to you endearingly, overcome that shyness, that's probably easier said than done, uh, or a little bit of sensitivity, because when those things overwhelm you, uh, they tend to hold you back. But other than that, brilliant, brilliant future for you. Keep strong. That was perfect. Were you it going was to perfect. Say that? Yeah. yeah. The only thing is, I'm picking up with Anne Marie because she's travelled quite a bit and she spends too much money. So you need to start being tighter with your money because I'm picking up. You're quite loose. You like the good life. You like to live large. So if you want to buy property, you want to move out, you want to move forward, there's sacrifice, they're telling me. And I feel you have enough, um, put enough of it, enough into your. Um, bank account, they're showing me your bank account, so I'm not picking up that there's enough money. And you're meant to generate a lot of money, but you're, you're a bit loose with it, they're telling me. But you definitely will be buying property, but not yet. At least for 18 months to two years, you need to keep building up that deposit. And that's, that's, that's the reality, isn't it? Yeah. If you don't have money for a deposit, you won't get out of that Especially rental cycle. Especially in Australia. Mm. They're know. very, very hard. The banks will not help you. Yeah. If you don't have a deposit or savings. So many people now are yeah. just, I suppose, resigned to the fact that they're not going to get out of the renting cycle. And you really have to be quite regimented these days to put a certain yeah. amount of money aside every week. Yeah, you know what? Uh, my thoughts on that too, uh, d don't let that overwhelm you because it is what it is. And you're where you are, you, where you are. If you have a roof over your head, uh, I don't think you have to subscribe forever saying that uh, you've got this notion yeah. of not having your own home. Well, it's just in this particular moment. You yeah. may very well in the future have your own home, yes. but, but think about where you are now. Well, also, yeah. I mean, there's lots of countries like America where most people just accept that they're never going to, to own a property mm. and that they will rent and they work their lives around around that. Mm. So maybe Australia is becoming a little bit more that way inclined too. I mean, uh, it's not really feasible for young people these days. Like when I was in my 20s, it was quite common for us to go out and buy a $100,000 flat because we could afford it. But kids the same age these days, how are they going to afford a $1.2 million yeah. apartment mm -hmm. in Freshwater that's a two-bedroom apartment? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's 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 really yes. out of control. So, yeah, I agree with you, Steve. People should really be happy with the situations. We don't know how long we're going to be here anyway, so. Okay. Uh, okay. Snapshot readings, because time's getting away here. Okay, so Jessica, uh, when I was younger, between 5 and 12, I could see, feel and speak with spirits. I was in a few situations that really scared me and made me uncomfortable, so I switched off and it didn't allow this communication anymore. Now that I'm um, an adult and I've adjusted, I've had moments that I feel that i had made a mistake in doing this and um, it's something that I would like to have come back. Hi, Jessica. Um, what I'd say with this, I always say to people, when you have these experiences, it's, uh, it's very important to pray or to have a connection with a, a higher power because it can be scary. So for me, I believe in prayer. So when I'm in these scenarios, I always pray. So it's very important that you connect and pray. Um, to reconnect, I, I would recommend that you um, look into meditating because um, that's what I did. I was also scared when I started out, um, but I've been meditating now for 17 years, so that helps me. So if you want to reconnect, I highly recommend that you start meditating and take it from there. But it's your choice if you want to 
go tap back into it, but do it the right way because it can be, you don't want to tap into the dark side. Great advice. Snapshot readings, time's getting away from us. Uh, we have uh, Jeanette who's written in and she's the 10th of April, mm -hmm. 1979. And Jeanette says, uh, am I in the right company for my career? I love what I do, but sometimes I feel overwhelmingly challenged like something is bad to happen. It's around the corner. My husband doesn't care anymore. He <laughs> says that uh, he stays with me in two because my life is made easier with me being around him and uh, am I ever thinking about this? Uh, should I be doing something differently? I think she feels a bit vulnerable, a bit used. I'm picking up that you're a workaholic, you're fantastic at what you do, you're meant to be a leader, you're meant to generate a lot of money. Um, I would stay in the company you're at. Um, I would definitely not leave. Um, and your husband, I think he just gets frustrated with your negativity, to be honest. Um, if you're going to think bad, you'll receive bad. So try to just think positive thoughts because you actually, you're quite a very, very lucky woman on picking up and you've got a beautiful, beautiful life and your husband loves you dearly. So try and focus on all the good things and you're meant to also be a world traveller. So there's a lot of travel in your life too. But um, they love you at work, and, but you are a workaholic. Awesome. Now, Sylvia, mm -hmm. uh, I think your first reading, Sylvia wrote in. Yep. And she just wanted you to know that your reading brought tears to her eyes. That was incredibly accurate. And she's mm -hmm. extremely grateful for your support and help. And it's just oh, what she needed. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, Melissa. This is the last one for the evening for you. Now, Melissa is born on the 14th of the 11th, 1986. A relationship with my husband, married for five years, and feel that we're strong, but would just love to hear what is possibly for us in the future. Melissa. When I'm picking up here, Melissa, you're extremely, um, extremely sensitive. Um, you're also very spiritual, great intuition. With you and your husband, I'm picking up, it's time to plan to have a family. Um, before you um, go ahead with um, children or having more children, I'm also picking up on a lot of travel. So again, um, you're high spenders, so you both like the good life, so you come and go. Um, so now you have to focus on um, bringing the family together and um, oh, and I'm also picking up that you're also looking at moving and relocating into a new home. So there's a lot of things coming up, but they're all positive things. But I'm getting family. They're mentioning the word family. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, I've just, just got a quick uh, numerology reading here before we wrap up the show tonight. Uh, Kerry's written in and her birth date is August 15, 1957. Uh, Kerry, I, I don't think that retirement is going to be totally uh, you know, out of your life. I feel that you'll always continue to do something. Family is very important to you. Uh, but I, I want to say when you're ready for it, uh, and I'll use the phrase because I've used it so many times with reference to certain birth dates, in inverted commas, the rights to the joys and the pleasures of life. What a wonderful thing that will be afforded to you for the rest of your life. Uh, I think in this 12 month period, your family is very, very important to you. And that also means your home and responsibility around the home. I think we we're talking a bit before about renting and buying homes, but when you do own your own home, you're never out of the hardware shop. And the reason why I'm smiling about that is, Kerry, I don't think you're too far away from the hardware shop over this 12 month period too, because you're, you're beautifying your home, you're making it look more cosy. Uh, everything from the kitchen to the bathroom to the welfare of the home, is it cosy with winter coming on and is it filled with love? And uh, children, animals, uh, your husband, e everything that represents the family is very, very important to you. It always has been, it always will be. So the welfare of others is also uh, very, very deep in your heart. You care very much about people. 
people and people love you as well. You just have this presence about you. They, they greet you, they warm to you, and you might barely know these people, but you'll always do well. Uh, I feel that uh, work uh, is a little bit of a challenge for you. It has been for some time, whether this is keeping th things in system, in order, in routine, it's something that you consistently have to apply yourself to. And even though I said that family is one of the core things in your life, that also represents its challenges and its negotiation, but you master it. Uh, I, I want to say also too, you master drama, even though you seem to attract it in your life, you have this way of ironing it out and making everything look smooth. Look out for big changes coming up in December of this year. It's a very, very important uh, month for you. I think you're going to be winding up something and courses or some sort of study or perfecting your skills in 2018. Thanks for being with us on the show, as always, with all of our friends. And if you'd like to have a reading with me next week on the show or any of our guests who are coming on, Sheila Vajaraza will be on the show next week and also Peter Hoare, Friends of the Family. There is our details on the screen. Get your questions into our inbox and we warmly receive those. We don't throw those questions away. We keep them all on file. So uh, have faith that we'll get around to you eventually. Viv, we're um, down to uh, Fairy Meadow very soon. There yes. is the details and on the screen. And also a reminder about the this weekend, this coming weekend, Peter Hall's um, Ignite, uh, Ignite Your Flow. And I will be there along with um, Marg. Now it's in a, the beautiful uh, Karuna uh, Sanctuary, which is just outside Katoomba. And we're going to spend three days in this fabulous retreat doing what? Just what we were talking about tonight, unplugging our old patterns and getting into the flow. So by the time I uh, return from this beautiful retreat in the fabulous Blue Mountains, I was definitely going to have to rug up for that one with my bed socks. Um, there's still some places left. If you want to go to our website, you can still uh, book a place. Please come and join us. We're going to have three days of just absolute bliss looking after our inner child and unplugging all of those patterns that we've been talking about all night tonight. So further details, go to the AAY Facebook page and you can follow the prompts and we look forward to seeing you there. Now, um, that's it for tonight. Steve? Yes. And, Signing uh, off with a cask of... Like to join us in Ferry Meadow, uh, June 16, Friday night, will be at the Fraternity Club with all of our friends and uh, we'd like to have you there with us so we can do as many readings as we can. $55 per ticket, but if you buy three, you get the fourth ticket free. Details there on our screen. You can access us through Facebook, All About You. We've had some lovely ladies on the show tonight <laughs> yes. and Tulsi, lovely to have you with us as always. Lovely to be here. Thank and you. Always insightful and inspiring. Oh, thank you. And, and just beautiful, gentle, gentle advice. Mm. It makes you feel that you can, you can um, encompass it and, and take on those challenges. Wonderful to have you as well. Thank you um, for having Tanya, me. Tanya, it's just been wonderful. Thank you. I know you're going back soon. When are you going back to um, England? In four weeks' time. In four weeks' time. Yeah. So if you do want to have a reading, make sure that you email um, Marg on uh, w. Uh, all about you, au at gmail.com and um, and she'll get you in touch with with Tanya to do a reading for yourself or if you want an extended one from the one that you've already had this evening that's us signing off tonight Steve. it is Viv and your beautiful cobalt blue and uh, great to have you with us as always see you next Monday My night TV hubby yes uh, <laughs> friends so uh, Mm. We'll see you next week, my love. And uh, friends, we hope you can be with us too from 6.30 next Monday. Bye now. Bye.